Hello, my name is Ed Woods with IBM Corporation. Thank you for taking the time to take a look at this video on a quick look at Omegamon XE for ZOS V51. V51 has just recently been announced, will be available very shortly, and has a lot of great new feature function and capability inside of it. First, an important notice and disclaimer this video does not have any warnings expressed or implied. Anything that's in here is the intellectual property of IBM Corporation and this is purely for informational purposes only, this video. So Megamon V51 provides a lot of exciting new feature function. Simplification, integration, ease of use, minimization of the cost of ownership, modernization of the interface, customization, flexibility, a lot of this revolves around, amongst other things, the new Omegamon Enhanced 3270 user interface that I will show you in just a second. Part of this ease of use and ease of deployment revolves around a simplified architecture. So instead of having a lot of redundant CUA address spaces and other address spaces on each ZOS LPAR, like you would have in the V4.2 configuration below, now everything is going to go through a common consolidated a Megamon Manager or TOM address space and so all the various agents and components connect to the TOM and you log on to one place and you can get to wherever you need to get in your 3270 interface. So now here's an example of what the new 3270 UI looks like. Gives you the ability to be able to see information both from a Sysplex as well as a Kixplex perspective. Log on to one place, get all the information you need, navigate, drill down, do your analysis from there very much designed with the subject matter expert requirements in mind. So now let's take a look at this. So let's take a look at our real-time demo of the new interface. So we have our CICS, then we have our Sysplex level information, we have our toolbar at the top. We can navigate. Now I'm using hotspots in my 3270 emulation to click and I can go from side to side by hitting the arrows like we're doing here with the CICS information. Position the cursor next to the Sysplex. Now we'll get a pop-up and that pop-up will give us several options for information. Sysplex level data, coupling facility type information, resource data, LPAR level information. In this case we'll take an option to look at our top consumers. It should be option T. This is a very nice display, something that was added with the new interface. And here what we're seeing is we have our highest using tasks for CPU, virtual, real storage. And for example, looking at our CPU line, we see we have a batch job here, IBM user A, that's using the most CPU on the system at the moment. Select that, let's drill in, get some additional information several options looking at bottleneck or CPU. In this particular case we'll drill in and we'll get some CPU information showing right now this job is using it's a batch job using 71 percent mostly TCB time if it was using assist processors we would see that breakout as well we get the breakout SRB versus TCB time etc. Now we'll go back select another option. In this case we'll look at bottlenecks. Bottleneck analysis for the job. This shows us what percent of time we're waiting for CPU, what percent of time we're using CPU. Is the job in a loop or not? And then we have other options we can look at as well to see other percentile breakouts for bottlenecks. Scroll down, scroll up, then we have three back. So that's our top consumer display. That's a nice display that was uh, requested by our SMEs. Let's get another option here. What we'll do now is we'll drill into our LPAR overview. In this scenario, I just have a simple small system here. So there's only one LPAR. But if you had multiple LPARs, you would see them as well. Again, we can shift left to right if we so wish to see additional information. So we have the ability to have a lot more information on the 3270 screen without having to navigate all over the place to get the data. Select an option. Here's our pop-up. We can look at alerts, CPU, 
NQ data, LPAR level information, WLM data. Here we'll look at first at alerts. Here's alerts such as is RMF running or not, is SMF running or not, HSM status. Select our next, op next option. We'll look at our CPC level data. Look at our LPARs. So here we have our LPAR overview, LPAR status, capping information, CPU utilization, and here again we have the same drill down methodology as before. Go back. Let's select another option. Let's look at O storage, for example. Get our storage overview. We see our CSA, ECSA, SQA, ESQA. Then we have drill downs for detail, same as before. Select our option. Let's look at storage usage by address space. Hit enter, and there we go. So now we see we have our storage usage, common, real, virtual, on a nice consolidated screen. And then again, you could have drill downs for additional detail from there as well. Shift it left to right. Same navigation as I showed earlier. We'll go back and back again. Now let's see what else we can do. We can look at paging. Since we looked at storage, might as well look at paging. Here's our paging level information. Not a lot of paging on this particular system at the moment. Just a small demonstration environment. We'll go back. Select another option. Let's look at our address spaces. Our address space overview. This would be a common display. So here again, here's our CPU utilization overview summary. And you can sort again by different columns. You can sort by name or by CPU percent. Again, we see that this batch job is the busiest task on the system. If I want to get some additional drill down information on that job, I can select and then get options. Or I can here, for example, I can again shift side to side so I can see my various CPU breakouts. So I can see my zip percents, TCB percents, SRB percents, whatever. Or get some additional information on the job. So we can issue commands, we can cancel the task, do bottleneck analysis, look at CPU usage details, look at WLM information for the task, whatever is most in, of interest. So here what I've done is we've gone to an, uh, an address based bottleneck analysis summary. So now we're looking at bottleneck analysis for all tasks or we can go back and drill in on the particular task in question. Or here in this case actually I'm just going to show the, uh, the sorting. So we can sort by name, sort by CPU, whatever is relevant. We'll drill in again. Now we'll look at WLM information. Look at our service classes. See here again we have our service classes sorted. In this case we'll sort by performance index. And so now we'll have it descending and we see that we have a TSO service class that has a relatively high PI. Drill in on that. Get some detail. So now we see what's happening with that job in that particular service class. In this case, it's a TSO user. Happens to be my user ID. And then we'll F3 back, back to the main menu, and that's our intro. So that's what the new Enhanced 3270 interface looks like. We encourage you to take the time, take a test drive. It's a great interface, has a lot of exciting feature, function, and capability. I also want to quickly mention my blog tivlywithaz.blogspot.com. If you're interested in additional information, there's my name, there's my email address, and I just want to say thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time to look at this video.